how many awards did you earn and how much work experience did you have? I earned one specific award during my bachelor. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was, I did my bachelor in Asian studies, but I was focusing more on Korea back then. So I got an award about um, a person that got like the highest grade, but focusing on Korean studies. Mm -hmm in my university uh, i'm from the university of montreal okay. and about work experience i have a lot of work experience a lot of it is not relevant to jks so i didn't really push that forward when i applied but i did push forward anything that was related to mentoring mm -hmm. or my academic background so i did work to help students in their classes or i did uh some note taking for other students so i put it a little bit in my description when i was doing the personal statement mm. so how long how long did you work as a mentor uh i would say maybe three years three years okay yes so do you think uh the work experience uh, is helpful for your for your selection. I think it's helpful in the sense that it gives more background on me and what I want to aspire for, mm -hmm. because it's related to my uh, also goals in the future. So right. I think that if if it's something related to your future goals or that gives a really good insight on who you are, you should push forward that you have certain experiences in the workplace. But for some other parts, even if it's present and it's like a big part of your life, if it's not really relevant, I wouldn't push it forward. Agreed. Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, the GTS interview. Uh, did you have an <laughs> online or in-person yes. interview? I had a Zoom interview with, uh, there was three interviewees and okay. it was just me and them. So there was no other uh, applicants at the same time. Okay. And did the three schools uh, you chose interview as well? None of the schools interviewed me after. I just had the embassy interview. Okay. Oh. And how many interviewers were there? So there were three. They and, were all uh, members members. of the consulate. Mm. Uh, there was no teachers, so it was just members of the office, the consulate office. Okay, and were you the only interviewee? Yes. Okay. And uh, how long was the interview? I would say it was supposed to be around 15, 20 minutes. It was probably more around between 10 to 15 20, 20, 10. <laughs> between 10 to 15 <laughs> between 10 to 15 okay yes and how was the embassy or during the interview uh how is the embassy uh atmosphere oh atmosphere oh i was really nervous i was <laughs> so nervous i'm really uh um easily fidgety when I, I'm in those type of situations. So I wanted to do a good impression. So uh, it was nerve wracking, but I think I managed to not showcase it too much mm -hmm. because I got actually good feedback afterwards from the interview. But during the interview and just after, I thought it went really bad. <laughs> I, I was sure I wouldn't be selected afterwards but um they were really kind with me and they asked me questions that were not too difficult to answer uh, i was just really taken aback by one specific thing because um they were kind of unsure about my choice of program mm. so it made me really doubtful on if they really want to select me but well, what's interesting I mean, is yeah, from my from my interview experiences uh when i uh, after i had an interview and I felt oh I, I i bombed it but it actually went well 
I was selected or I, I was awarded. So, uh, but 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 um, mm -hmm. when I when I thought uh, it was a good interview, and it actually was not. <laughs> I think that's that's um, interesting. Um, I don't know chemistry or I don't know. So it's very uh, superficial. Yeah. Yeah. But the uh, it's glad I'm glad. I mean, in the end, that I did make it and that. Uh, it went better than I expected. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you remember some interview questions you received? Yes. Yeah, so they asked me obviously to introduce myself. Uh, what I did was to introduce myself in Korean to kind of a little bit showcase that I do know some basic Korean, mm -hmm. even though I'm clearly not fluent. That's why I'm in the language here. But I wanted also to show them, to make them comfortable, because also most of them were Koreans. Mm -hmm. So to show them that I have a respect of the culture and I have a really strong will to learn, I did that. But then afterward, I continued the interview in English because I thought that it would be easier to express what I wanted to say <laughs> for the rest of the questions. So uh, and, were the interviewers all Korean? Yes, because they were all members of the consulate. So uh, most of the people in the consulate of Montreal, they're actually Koreans living in Montreal. So uh, that's why for me, my interviewees were mm. all Koreans. Or um, they, they could be Korean Canadian. You never know. They could be. Yeah. But uh, from my interactions with them, they were mostly mm -hmm. from Korea. Okay. So uh, did you prepare some uh, interview answers in Korean, like self-introduction? Yes, I did prepare the self-introduction in Korean. Mm -hmm. And then for the rest, I only prepared in English. But I prepared like... A, a way to say that I would just continue the interview in English from now on for making it easier to understand. And um, among other questions that they asked, they asked a lot of questions regarding how I would react in Korea to certain experiences. So if I would be able to adapt, I think it's really an important thing to showcase through the interview to, um, show that uh, the person won't drop out in the middle of the process. Yeah, that's very important. Because yeah. uh, South Korea invests a lot of money. But if they drop, if they withdraw, then they're wasting time and energy, everything. So uh, they're mm -hmm. looking for those who uh, keep up the great work until they achieve their uh, academic dreams, uh, meaning they achieve their, uh, they, they obtain, obtain their uh, degrees in the end. Yes. Uh, so and it's one of the most important factors. Yes, exactly. And except that the other questions were more tailored towards my program or uh, why I chose Korea in the first place for my studies. Mm -hmm. So that's like the two subsection I would see the more academic questions and the more um, adapt to the lifestyle in Korea questions. Mm -hmm. Right. And how did you answer them? Uh, I answered them as it went because I, I, I didn't prepare, but I didn't have a script either in my mind because I didn't know exactly the question in advance. So I, before in my preparation, I was reviewing uh, what I want to express in the sense that uh, what are my goals in Korea or what are my specific academic background that can be useful for Korea and for Canada or um, what um, are the things that shows that I could be a good candidate. Mm -hmm. So that's more what I focus on. Great. And what are some tips to ace an interview? 
I think that to ace the interview, uh, it's important to um, show up on time and be really respectful, to be um, on your best behavior, mm -hmm. to really show them how important that interview is, and also to um, know really well the program and the structure because they will ask in-depth questions. So the more you know, the more you will be ready for anything and you won't be taken aback by the questions. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people actually talk about their interview experience online. So it's easy to see some probable questions mm -hmm. and to go towards those questions and prepare in advance. Oh, I could respond this way or I could keep this point in mind could be really useful. So practice makes perfect. <laughs> Correct. And um, so what you're trying to say is be honest and be sincere. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And let's talk about the entry to South Korea in self-quarantine. Um, mm -hmm. How long did it take to receive a visa? The visa process uh, is actually really fast for my personal experience. So I think it was around 10 business days. So very fast. It, it, yeah, it's really fast uh, <laughs> to actually receive it. And how much did it cost to arrive in Korea in your salary? Um, I had to take a domestic flight. And the PCR test, uh, so for me, maybe around 500 for uh, both of them together. But uh, depending where you're leaving, uh, those fee can be non-existent in the sense also that depending if COVID continues or not, <laughs> it can also change that aspect. So it, it's because of those two points I had to um, pay some fees, but if not, mm -hmm. it would have been free. And uh, did you bring some pocket money to Korea? Yes. Uh, our school actually warned us in advance that the first stipend can be a little bit delayed. So I had the amount for about one month to survive in okay. Korea. Yeah. And uh, water must bring items to Korea. I would say that must bring items would be things that you can't find in Korea. So more personal items, mm. for example, pictures with your friends and families or specific food. And I know if you have like snacks that you personally like that are specific to your country, a lot of people bring that with them. I kind of wish I stuck, stuck more of those <laughs> with me, uh, but uh, I, it's a little bit too late now. <laughs> uh, and except that, uh, I would say uh, if you are on the taller side, certain specific clothes, for me, it's hard to find pants in Korea. So mm. um, I did bring a lot of pairs before coming. If you need something more, why don't you ask your parents or friends to mail you? Oh, I could, but the fees are quite expensive to send from Canada to Korea because it's such a huge distance. Mm -hmm. So that's why I refrain for now. I will only if uh, it's a matter of a really important uh, necessity. But mm -hmm. if not, it's quite easy to find what I need in Korea. It's mm -hmm. not too hard. Okay. I'm sure you can find a lot uh, at at Costco too. <laughs> yes, but I'm quite far from the Costco <laughs> here. But when you uh, start studying at Yonsei. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, it think, will be easier to get. Yeah, think of it as an option. Things. Yes. And uh, where did you self-quarantine for 14 days? I actually self-quarantined in the dorm. So our school was taking care of everything. Uh, they picked us up at the airport brought us directly to the dorms and we were put uh, individually in rooms mm -hmm. so that we could quarantine for two weeks and uh, afterward we moved out and changed dorms obviously we didn't stay in the same room <laughs> how, how was the quarantine 
it went really well. I took it as a time to adapt to the time zone change. <laughs> so oh. it was actually a good way to rest and to just prepare myself for life in Korea afterwards. We were really excited uh, when we first came out because it's uh, refreshing to be able to walk outside. <laughs> Um, but uh, the quarantine was nice. I had a great view. I was on the seventh floor and my campus has a lot of nature trees and it's kind of a little bit in the mountain mm -hmm. area. So the, the view was actually really nice. You're on the lucky floor. Yes, <laughs> the lucky floor. I'm still in the on the lucky floor. I ended up again on the seventh floor. Wow. <laughs> yes. I haven't helped you. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, how was the food during the quarantine? The food was good. I know that some people had uh, more difficulty to adapt to the food offered because uh, it's mostly typical Korean food. Mm -hmm. But for me, I had no issue. It was really good. I had three meals per day and I had snacks. So everything was good. <laughs> like back when you were in Canada, uh, did you enjoy having Korean food? Yes, I did. Uh, I, I'm not able to really cook it, but when I go to restaurants, the Korean restaurants, I, I do enjoy Korean food. I guess you're not a picky person. I'm not that picky. I'm not that great with spicy food. So mm. certain food I need to eat with moderation. <laughs> but uh, except that, I don't think I'm the most picky either. <laughs> That's good. Um... And is your monthly allowance enough to live in Korea? I would say that it really depends of uh, the lifestyle and mostly of the rent. Mm. For me right now, it's easy to live on the monthly allowance. However, uh, for someone that is uh, in Seoul, for example, in a one room, it could mm. become a little bit more um, difficult to strictly live on that allowance. Right. Because rent can vary so much mm -hmm. so i would say that uh, it will be better for applicants to look in advance what area they will be in mm -hmm. and what style of uh, um, room they want maybe if they have the dorm it can be possible to live just on the allowance but maybe if they go for one room or other style it could be a little bit hard so I guess uh, you'll be spending uh, more when you start living in downtown Seoul. Yes, exactly. But I did save up in advance. So I think it's also a good thing for people, for example, if during their language year, if they don't have too much expensive fees for rent to kind of save up to mm -hmm. be able to put that money on their future expenses. Correct. All right, and how far is Konyang University away from Seoul? I would say it's about two hours, 30 minutes by bus. Mm -hmm. So there's actually a uh, bus that goes directly to Seoul. There's no need to transfer, so it, it's not that far. But just far enough to be uh, difficult to do a day trip there. <laughs> ah. Yeah. But aren't you used to the, the travel distance? Because um, Canada is way bigger than South Korea. Oh, yes. For me, it's no issue. For me, it's really close by. Mm -hmm. But I know that uh, I'm, while I'm talking with other people here, that for some people, it could be considered far. Yeah. For me, it's a quite short distance, but it really depends on the perspective. Yeah, the distance is uh, very subjective. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And how is the language program and how are the Korean teachers at Konyang University? Well, the language program is really intensive. So it's every day for about four hours. And uh, we have um, three main teachers, not three main teachers, a main teacher and two supplementary teachers. So it's actually a really nice thing because we can see a different perspective on the subject. And um, there's supplementary class for topic class mm -hmm. that are not mandatory, but free to subscribe to. Mm -hmm. 
in the afternoon. And um, what level are you in? Uh, for now, I'm in Oban, which is like Jungo 2. Oh, so intermediate? Intermediate, intermediate 2. Okay. Yes. And how is it studying Korean? Well, it's really fun, but it's really demanding. Uh, I feel that uh, the hardest part for me is probably to remember all the vocabulary <laughs> from day to day. Mm -hmm. But with like, uh, I would say that my biggest tip for learners would mm -hmm. be to actually have a routine, a schedule of studying. So to put specific times in their day that they will always study at those times mm -hmm. to be sure to maintain uh, what they acquired in class. Mm -hmm. Okay, then what, what's your uh, target level for topic uh, by the end of the Korean program? Mm, for now, I just, to access my master, I just need the topic three. But uh, in my program later on, I will have to achieve a topic four. So ideally, if I could achieve a topic four by the end of the language year, that mm -hmm. would be really helpful. Okay. But any higher grade is also accepted for me. I mean, I would be glad to achieve further. And even after the language year, I will continue to study also Korean. So the higher, the merrier. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what are your plans after finishing your master's program? After my master's program, I don't have necessarily a 100 specific plan in the sense that I want to keep my options open, but my uh, goal would be to probably continue in academia. So mm -hmm. I would like to pursue more something related to education. So I would like to maybe become a lecturer in Korean studies or e either ideally probably back in Canada because I feel that there's a need of uh, people in that field, especially in Quebec, because there's uh, no specific program for mm -hmm. Korean studies in my area. Mm -hmm. So my goal would be to probably bring back my knowledge with me. Uh, that'll be yes. that'll be um, rewarding. Yes. And um, contributing uh, to your home country and South Korea as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome. And uh, would you please say a few encouraging words to our uh, studying Korea dreamers? Yes, well, to all the future applicants or current applicants, I wish you a lot of luck. And also, um, don't be discouraged by the amount of work you put in. I think it's really worth it. The hard work that you do now will pay off in the end. <laughs> well, good luck, everybody. Yes, good luck. OK, uh, that's it for today. Um, thank you, Becky for sharing all your valuable experiences uh, with studying Korea Dreamers. Thank you so much to have received me on your channel, it was an honor. Well, on behalf of our studying Korea, uh, Korea Dreamers, uh, I appreciate your time and effort uh, sharing your experiences today. Thank you so much. And all the best to you and hopefully oh. stay safe and healthy. Yeah, all the best to you too, and also stay safe with COVID. We need to all be careful. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, that's it for today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications. Uh, be very much appreciated. Thanks for watching. Now, enjoy your stay. <laughs>